My name is David Daniel Ball and these are the headlines for Friday, the 20th of February, 2009. I intend to include cartoons from Zeg throughout this. He's great. Landlords cashing in on homeless bushfire victims. Press sidelining criticism of inept government. Driver smeared with blood in horror bus attack. Extremely rare bird found, then eaten. Fire Jones classes bearing fruit for Burgess. V Australia handed final approval. Seth Rogen to pose for Playboy. Hockey and Swan face off in televised panel debate. Alleged ATM bandits arrested at gunpoint. Slain chimp's owner, I didn't drug him up. Pizza Hut robbery foiled after knife fight. Bonus for employers rehiring apprentices. Public housing empty despite massive waiting list. Howard says the stimulus package is a knee-jerk response to the global financial crisis. Media chief masturbated in front of tourists. And in a report, Oklahoma City police admit making a mistake in pulling over a man with an anti-Obama sign. Of course, that's the police. Reese backflips on Robertson's $500,000 refurbishment. And in comments from Tim Blair, don't even ask what happened to Garfield. Sometimes you don't need context to appreciate a news line. When they did come on, Scooby-Doo ended up wrecked and Batman caught on fire. Reform is underway. Thursday, Daily Telegraph editorial on New South Wales Public Sector Reform Minister John Robertson's planned $500,000 office upgrade. We've got an idea where public sector reform could start. Shelving a certain office refit for a senior public servant. Friday's Daily Telegraph story. Former union boss turned minister John Robertson may be booted out of his ministerial suite before he even gets to enjoy it. After Premier Nathan Rees yesterday ordered a review of a $500,000 planned refurbishment. All credit to the Telegraph State reporter Simon Benson. Also, Travis has no control over ocean levels. The top 10 reasons President Barack H. Obama is nothing like Travis the Chimp. The anti Krugman, she's the world's only non Ugmo economist. He shoots, he claws. Grizzly bears don't like getting their ears wet, which inhibits attempts to retrieve dead salmon from riverbeds. The solution? Salmon football. You'll need to click on the link to see what that's about. Sometimes a monkey is just a monkey. Racist, racist, racist. The New York Post is accused of running a racist cartoon. The monkey deal relates to a crazed Connecticut chimp incident. A prominent huckster's nevertheless take offense. Civil rights activist Al Sharpton called the cartoon troubling at best given the historic racist attacks of African Americans as being synonymous with monkeys. In fact, recent history reveals that US presidents are synonymous with monkeys. The Guardian Steve Bell spent most of George W. Bush's two terms portraying him as an ape. Which, incidentally, the post cartoon doesn't do to Obama. Importing the Unemployed from Andrew Bolt. Why is the Rudd government running the biggest immigration program in our history just as the economy crashes? As the global recession worsens, Professor Birrell said it was time for the Rudd government to rethink its record high migration intake. This reckless spending must stop. John Howard is right, of course. We should not be panicked into fiscal profligacy and the burdening of future generations of Australians with huge amounts of debt. We in the Liberal Party know that it took 10 years for Australia to repay the $96 billion of federal debt left behind by Paul Keating. We can only contemplate the length of time needed to liquidate the $200 billion of debt our nation now faces as a consequence of recent policy decisions. Malcolm Turnbull and his colleagues were right to oppose the government's stimulus package. It needlessly plunges Australia deeply into debt with a poorly targeted spending spree. No child is a curse. A young woman, call her Ms. G, was rolled into Canberra Operating Theatre on November the 12th, 2003, hoping to be made pregnant at last. Are we going to implant two? asked her obstetrician gynecologist, Sydney Robert Armelin. It was at that moment of her IVF treatment that Ms. G, unknown to anyone else, changed her mind. And from her hesitation came not just a twin girl she didn't want, but an extraordinary court case that must now surely force our politicians to act. 
Can we really have courts deciding that a child is such a curse that a parent like Ms. G should be paid $317,000 for the distress and cost of raising it? Can we really let judges put a price on a child's head, counting the cost of even the food in its mouth, but none of the immeasurables gained in its life? Let's rewind. Ms. G and her partner, Ms. M, are Melbourne lesbians who decided to have a baby. Rudd blinks as carbon plan hits fan. This white elephant is limping badly. Just hope that when it crashes it doesn't hurt too many of us. Burning too little, too late, the Brumby government is now taking credit for saving houses from Black Saturday's fire instead of accepting blame for dooming them. Dear victim, don't upset the racists. It's years since police have issued warnings to women not to deter rapists by wearing short skirts, but Victoria Police now issue this advice. Indian students will be taught not to speak loudly in their native tongue or display signs of wealth such as iPods when traveling on trains at night as part of a strategy to crack down on violent robberies. Some restrictions on their attackers may actually be a better strategy, but once again we find it's easier to police the lawful than the feral. Left stranded, it seems Connex was right. Union bastardry is making life hell for rail commuters. A union with close ties to public transport minister Lynn Kosky shut down a suburban train line for nine hours yesterday over an internal dispute creating havoc for thousands of commuters. Connex had earlier claimed that up to 80% of cancellations, including those during the heat wave last month, were caused not by bad trains but worse unions. The union involved is of the socialist left.